Gabriel McSharry, nutritionist and medical herbalist. A safe and effective approach to your health condition. Call the clinic on 071-9142-940. Now I'm joined in studio by Gabriel McSharry, medical herbalist and nutritionist. Uh, Gabriel, thanks a million for coming in to us. Morning, Margaret. And of course, if listeners have questions, you can send them in to us now by text 083-3500-530 and call us at 0818 Three six five five hundred. And now just some of the questions that we didn't get to last week we'll start off with. Uh, this listener is saying that they keep waking up every two or three hours and have to go to the toilet. This has only started happening in the past month. I have no pain or anything, just an increase in using the toilet. So what could be wrong there? Yeah, well, not too sure about this one. I probably need a bit more information. But generally, uh, I'd um, first off, did she uh, or uh, add anything to the diet? Uh, are you consuming more uh, fluids uh, stuff like that I'd, I'd look into um, generally sometimes high sugar beverages or even juice uh, fruct- uh, fructose can increase urinary frequency in the diet so that's one thing but uh, the fact that there's no pain and stuff like that would probably indicate it's not um, uh, an, an infection, infection. but you, what you could do is what I use at the clinic have these dipsticks so you just uh, dip it in the test for nine different things in the urine and how you do it is you take a, generally a, a midstream urine sample so you go to the toilet and halfway through you put some into a cup and then you use these dipsticks now they're great because they detect uh, any kind of blood or occult blood so you can't see it but there's traces there or any kind of proteins or uh, immune uh, molecules that it that it indicate that there's an infection so you can rule that out if, if, if you want but generally plus if the caller is male uh, it may be um, uh, prostate uh, enlargement you know that can also cause frequency generally there's a bit of pain there as well but uh, not always but it would just be frequency so to go to urinate say before bed if that was the routine all the time uh, but then they might have to go again an hour later that's uh, a common symptom picture of prostate enlargement so uh, if any of them ring a bell that's what I'd explore that kind of route Okay, this listener saying my child has a terrible cough for the past few weeks. Nothing seems to be working to get rid of it, and he's very healthy. Mm. Well, I use herbal medicines for a cough, persistent coughs or otherwise. I, I'll list out a few, but uh, I would uh, look into uh, environment here. Um, you know, if there's any, uh, make sure you're getting fresh air and, and, and so on. But. Uh, uh, these air fresheners, chemical air fresheners, people want to be really careful about these, especially scented candles and stuff, because I've done a bit of research into them, and there's a lot of chemicals that uh, initially were thought to do no harm to humans, but now we know that it can exacerbate asthmatics, it can cause asthma and allergies, Uh specifically in the respiratory tract. So, not that there's direct research to show that it could cause cough, but I wouldn't rule it out because of that. So, if you've added them generally in the last period of time to the house, i get them out, that'd be one thing. Uh, But in in general, uh, some herbs that are good for coughs are lobelia, hyssop, um, astragalus and glycorrhiza they're the main ones I use thyme is great as well uh, generally uh, you can take it in a tincture form how I give it but if you want you can also use manuka honey a good quality honey uh, and mix the herbs into that with a, a bit of hot water and you make a kind of uh, I suppose a homemade cough syrup uh, the manuka itself in general will be good for uh-huh. is good for easing cough especially a dried cough uh, or a sore throat so uh, there'll be some recommendations OK uh, this listener says their tummy is bloated they have a good diet of fresh fruit and vegetables don't take a lot of sweet foods yeah um Bloating very common, um, and I'd recommend a probiotic. Uh, you can get it in a capsule in the fridge in, in a pharmacy or a health shop, uh, but you get it naturally in yogurts. So good quality yogurt, uh, Glenisker, Yo Valley, whole milk natural yogurts, probably the best ones out there in the supermarkets. And uh, it's to really put good bacteria back into the gut because yeah. uh, generally with a lot of bloating, um, like uh, IBS, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, of which bloating is the main thing, um, is is 
on the increase big time uh, it's very common these days and I think it's because our food chain really has gone off the rails but uh, with bloating um, there's uh, uh, it's important to restore the beneficial microflora that have got because there's probably bad guys in there who are creating a lot of gas and uh, hence the bloating with bloating then you have uh, a, like a, a mechanical increase in size in the abdomen and that can cause pain yeah. and also alter bowel function, diarrhea, constipation and so on. Uh, herbal medicines there's some really good ones here um, there's a clinically proven one so one with lots and lots of scientific research uh, which I like to use um, so if you want to go evidence based there's one called Iberogast I-B-E-R-O-G-A-S-T I think it's German but you can look that one uh, look that one up it's it's a really good one it comprises of about 10 herbs uh, other ones chamomile berberus golden seal root uh, mint even mint tea uh, can alleviate bloating again just for the symptom uh, the symptom picture just to reduce the bloating and therefore the discomfort but okay. in general um, uh, w- w- even though uh, vegetables and fruits are very important and very healthy if you're experiencing a lot of bloating and wind I'd roll back on salads and raw vegetables and fruits for a period of time until that abates okay. so just pure your fruits and uh, boil your vegetables and stay away from salads just for a period of time because if the digestion's off they're going to be hard to digest Okay, listener says I'm getting what seems like panic attacks mild ones, just get uh, short of breath, what can I do? Mm. Well, I get it looked into in that uh, make sure blood pressure is good and uh, cardiovascular function is good. Um, I mean, panic attacks are, are something that can be multifactorial of what's causing them. Generally, the nervous system, though. So I use nervine tonics in herbal medicine, um, uh, which can be helpful. Uh, shortness of breath is very common in panic attacks or anxiety and the reason is it's uh, your respiratory system your lungs are closely linked to your nervous system and uh, it's funny though uh, our interesting research that was done on this where when we get anxious or panicky we shallow breathe so we breathe with the upper half of our lungs and it's a chicken and an egg thing so when I looked into it it's actually if you start to shallow breathe that can spark off an anxiety attack or a panic attack Uh, so the key is really to awareness of breath is very important it's very old Uh, there's breathing exercises there 2000 years old Mm. that encourage people to be aware of their breath and it's it's a very simple thing it's an automatic thing so we don't give it much credence but it's extremely important with uh, anxiety and and even mood swings but also panic attacks where uh, if you're shallow breathing and some people if they're just reading a book for the, just unconsciously start to shallow breathe or something or have to concentrate and it's important to be awareness of breath now exercise will kind of do it uh, automatically for you but there's there's breathing exercises that can be um, mm. really you, really you, good you well. actually took us through a breathing exercise before so just just remind our listeners about, about it it might yeah. be helpful to this person it's, it's a very easy uh, one to remember it's called the 478 breathing exercise so it's basically and again it's it's so old this it's hundreds of years old um so you breathe in for four seconds and you hold your breath for seven seconds and then you breathe out for eight seconds Hmm. so So it's it's in for four hold for seven out for eight yeah now there's a few things that i think i have it on my website but that make it a little bit better that when you blow out you uh you kind of blow out with a a whish like uh, as if you're whistling and okay. so you blow out slowly and, and and you sit up straight and stuff like that but it's something that once you, you can learn it in an hour and once you have it you can do it in traffic you can do it in a public place in a queue wherever uh, people Feel. can get anxious or panicky okay. and uh, it can be very very good or you can use it anywhere and uh, it, can, it can be a great adjunct to treatment all right. Now, this listener, Jerry and Donny Gall, um, he is looking for help for a yeast infection. Right. Well, it uh, depends on where the infection is, Jerry, but most likely uh, if it's in the skin, uh, it's also in the gut. But generally, yeast infections, Candida albicans is the main one that where you get the infection in the gut, but it can cause, uh, it's kind of the root of yeast infection under the toenails under the fingernails or even a a skin condition or scalp condition or in the armpits or the groin 
so if there's yeast overgrowth in all them areas, there's generally yeast overgrowth in the gut. Now, Candida albicans is if cultured off stool analysis, it, it, it's it's supposed to be there, you know, it's there normally in people, but it grows, um, it overpopulates in people again, as I mentioned earlier, that have uh, an imbalance in the ecosystem of the gut, so a low level of good bacteria and a mm. high level of bad guys or yeast and so on, and once it adheres to the gut wall, that's where it sets up the. Uh, the field for allergies and also bloating, wind and so on. So yeast is an anaerobic microorganism, so therefore it doesn't use oxygen for fuel it it, use, it ferments. So sugars, uh, anything with yeast in it like beer uh, malt vinegar, uh, sometimes peanuts because they have kind of yeast growth on them. All these things are going to exacerbate uh, your yeast um, Infection and therefore, for a period of time, largely cut these out. Probiotics, as I mentioned, really good. So, a good quality yogurt. Uh, I use anti fungal or anti candida or anti yeast herbal medicines. Uh, again, golden seal and berberus are really powerful. Tabby Bua uh, or Podarco. Uh, these all are all things that will uh, reduce the overgrowth of yeast in the gut while you repopulate it with good guys, good bacteria and in the process clean up the diet and it's a bit of a long haul but you, you can get there in the end you know Okay and finally what's good to use for dry eyes and uh, what causes it? The cause can be uh, many things uh, what you could use is um, general uh, a saline uh, solution that you buy in the chemist you can wash them out with that uh, there is called fake tears um, I use an infusion of calendula flowers so marigold flowers it's a herb but you make a tea of it and then you strain off the uh, the, le- uh, the flowers and what you're left with you let cool and then you use an eye bath again you're getting a pharmacy it's like a shot glass uh, to wash out both eyes and if there's any infection or ir- irritation and stuff, the calendula helps with that. Uh, it can be caused by many things, you know, foreign objects going into it, dust, uh, uh, cold air, um, allergies, uh, you know, it can be part of uh, an autoimmune condition, more severe conditions. Uh, it can be linked to, so it can be big, linked to many things and really uh, it's the type of thing we go through in a consultation we work out why uh, okay. you're getting it but the treatment is, is much the same. Alright now we have lots of questions in about vertigo, hot flushes thinning hair so what we're going to do is and thanks to listeners who sent them in again um, because of our, our, of our time here um, we'll uh, start with those again when you're back with us in two weeks time. Uh, Gabriel McSharry Medical Herbalist and Nutritionist thanks a million for joining us in the studio this morning. Thanks Margaret. Rejoin me in Ocean Life just after this break. Gabriel McSharry, nutritionist and medical herbalist. A safe and effective approach to your health condition. Call the clinic on 071-9142-940.